All right, great. So one of the things that we did in Remix quite a lot was we deployed our code to a Remix VM or a JavaScript virtual environment. We wanna be able to do the exact same thing in Foundry in order to test and interact with our contracts. Foundry actually comes built in with a virtual environment in the shell. And if you run Anvil, you'll get an output that looks, and we pull this to the top, you'll get an output that looks something like this. Anvil, and we get some fake available account with some fake private keys. You'll also get a wallet mnemonic, the derivation path, which you can ignore, some details about the blockchain, and then this endpoint or RPC URL, which we're gonna learn about soon. For now, if you wanna close this, hit Control C, or just delete your terminal to end running the Anvil blockchain. Now, moving forward, we're going to work with Anvil, but I do wanna give you an intermediary step, and that's gonna be with the Ganache ETH chain. And we'll have a link to this in the GitHub repo associated with this lesson. Ganache is a one-click blockchain, and it gives us a user interface or an app for us to look at our transactions in an easier way. So if you go ahead and download it for your system, we can get started there. Now, a note for Windows users, if you're using WSL, the setup here is a little funky. We ran into some issues with it in our previous course, and we'll have some troubleshooting tips for those of you who are using Windows and WSL, if you wanna work with Ganache. Everything that we're gonna be doing moving forward though, does work with Anvil. Ganache just allows us to see transactions a little bit better than doing all this stuff in the terminal. So if you're having a hard time with Ganache, don't worry, we can do everything that we're doing with Anvil, which should work for you, no problem. Once you have Ganache installed, when you open it up, it'll look something like this. And if we hit Quick Start for Ethereum, we'll actually create a brand new, locally running blockchain with a nice little UI to view things. Same as Anvil and same as Remix, we get some addresses, we get each of them has balances, they come with some dummy private keys and dummy addresses, and the likes. What's nice about this is that we can see the blocks, we can see different transactions, and if we're working with Truffle, we can see contracts. We're not gonna work with Truffle though, but these are gonna be very helpful for us to view stuff. Additionally, we're not gonna use Ganache again in the future, so if you have trouble setting up with it, don't worry, just use Anvil. I'm gonna use it to show you what's going on. Remember though, don't use these private keys on a public blockchain. It's for development purposes only because everyone knows these private keys because they're dummy private keys. Now, in order for us to learn how to actually deploy to this blockchain or how to deploy to Anvil, if we're working with Anvil, we need to understand how even Remix was able to deploy to a public blockchain. When in Remix, when we switched to injected provider MetaMask, we know that MetaMask popped up, it asked us to add our password and we went ahead and got connected. And if we looked in MetaMask, we saw our account is indeed connected to Sepolio. When we hit deploy, our MetaMask popped up again and it was able to deploy our contract to a real test network. Well, how did it know where to send our transaction? How did it know where to send our contract? Well, let's go ahead and open up our MetaMask here. If we click the three little dots and hit expand view, we hit the little button now and we go to settings and we go to networks. You'll actually see in here that each one of these networks, Ethereum mainnet, Gorilla, Sepolia, Linea, or whatever you have, comes with a whole bunch of information. Let's go to ETH mainnet and check that out for a second. It has a name, an RPC URL, a chain ID, currency symbol, and block explorer. This RPC URL is the actual HTTPS endpoint that we actually send API calls to when we're sending transactions. So whenever you interact with MetaMask and you send a transaction or you deploy a contract, you're actually making an API call to whatever is in here. You'll see this is an Infura endpoint, and Infura is known as a node as a service project that allows you to send transactions to a blockchain node without having to run one yourself. If you wanted to send transactions to your own blockchain node, you would just swap this out with your own blockchain node address. We can't actually change the ones that come built into MetaMask, but we can add new networks, which is what we're gonna do now. In here, if we scroll to the bottom, we can hit add network manually, and we can add information about our own custom network. So for us, we're gonna make this new network called localhost or local chain or whatever you wanna call it. For RPC URL, if you're working with Ganache, it's gonna be this RPC server right here. If you're working with Anvil, at the bottom, we have this listening 
here. So what we would do is we would copy this or we would copy this from Ganache and paste it in here. Just note that you always need the HTTP or HTTPS colon slash slash. Most of our local applications aren't gonna be HTTPS, they're just gonna be HTTP. So if we're working with Ganache, let's go ahead and copy the Ganache endpoint, paste it in here like so. Every single blockchain gets their own chain ID. It's an easy way for us to know which blockchain that we're interacting with. Ganache has 1337 and Anvil doesn't say it, but it's 31337. So Anvil is 31337. Since I'm using the Ganache endpoint here, I'm gonna type in 1337. If you're using Anvil, it would be 31337. But what's kind of nice is MetaMask can actually identify what you're using and identify the chain ID and basically tell you what chain ID to use. Just a note, it looks like the newer versions of Ganache are using a different RPC server and a different network ID. And make sure you're on this hard for the merge here as well. Although in practice, I've found that even when you have 5777, it still is expecting 1377. So be sure to use the correct chain ID when you're working with this. Currency symbol, we're gonna do ETH. And since this is a local blockchain, we don't actually have a block explorer. Etherscan has no way to connect to our own local blockchain. So we don't get a block explorer for this one. But if I go ahead and hit save now, it says network added successfully, and I can go ahead and switch to my local host chain. Boom, and now we can see it in my list of networks. Of a local host, I've got no assets, no NFTs, and no activity. Now, if your local Anvil or Ganache chain isn't running after you've put it in your MetaMask, if you actually try to swap to your Anvil or to your local host or to your Ganache, you'll just get this spinning wheel of death here, right? And eventually you'll get this little X that'll show up and you'll have to switch to a different network. So if you ever wanna to switch to one of these that isn't running, it won't work. You'll have to either run it or you can hit X here. And then in your MetaMask, you could just delete one of these right here. While we're not running our Ganache or our Anvil, we're just not gonna have one of these selected. Great. And so this is where on both Anvil and Ganache, they have these available accounts and these private keys. Since I'm using Ganache, what I can do is I can select this show keys, copy this private key and import it into my MetaMask. So I can go up, hit this little button. I can hit import account, paste my private key in here and hit import. Now you'll see in my MetaMask, I have a couple different accounts. Account three, the one I just imported, has 100 ETH. Why does it have 100 ETH? Well, because I'm using one of these dummy accounts from Ganache. And again, if you're using Anvil, they have they start with 1,000 ETH. 